Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video we are going rolling grain we're going to crush a lot of grain to feed our cattle uh, Father Phil is in front of me to 99 and the trailer Bro's behind me with the 6290 to run the mill and I have the power loader and a bucket full of our additive and antifreeze because the sprayer is up in that shed and he wants to treat it with antifreeze or wash out the tank or something but um, yeah so anyways we are baking down up so before we get too much further in the video please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel ring the bell so you get notified of my videos every tuesday thursday and sunday the bell is that little yoke beside the subscribe button you just click on that and click all notifications that way youtube lets you know when our videos up we're going to be on and we're going to get some rolling done and use the post loader and just show you i've done two bits of rolling up there and oh swing loading in the shed at grain the best thing since sliced bread and it was we'll be here we are in the shed, so just a matter of doing a bit of sweep and tidying up and get hooked up to the mill and we'll be ready to go. So we'll have our beans here. So we're going to be beans along with our oats and our barley and roll it and treat it with our alkaline stuff. So anyways, we'll get bro hooked up here. No, I think it's Try to get out when I found it. Why are we bringing our home? We're not bringing our home. That's staying here. Yeah. And you're drawing the grain. Am I? Are you? Wait, you're gonna load like this? So we're pretty much ready to start filling. Right, come on, bring your yeah, yeah, the bike. Take the bags off there, and yeah, so we'll roll out on the ground, and then we'll fill the trailer to keep the mill going. So I'll try and take as much barley as I can from there behind bro, so that we have as much space as we can, not for road stuff and on road stuff to mix. But anyways, we'll get to it. These bags are our bags of inoculant, and it's the white bags is prilled urea, so the real expensive stuff. But we bought it in time, so it wasn't too bad, but you can't even get it now, can you? So, anyways, it's one bag of inoculant to three bags of prilled urea. Five ton of grain. Five ton of grain, and that creates the reaction in the grain. It releases ammonia gas, which brings up the pH of the grain, and also brings up the protein. But it leaves it, the, the, the stuff that's preserved with a very strong ammonia, 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 ammonium smell. It smells, it smells a lot like batch and that also helps keep vermin away. And, uh, and it preserves, it preserves the grain. Father Phil is putting a few beans. Okay, down the way. So we get the barley into the mill now. Concentrate taken from behind the mill first. Give us the most amount of space to get stuff rolled out. So just make sure that we don't have to be mixing stuff. Now you can see. You can see now what I can do. I can swing around the loader from where I picked up the grain. Like cannot explain how handy that is. Like in comparison to what he had to do with the teleporter, it's just, it's, it's on a different level, so the teleporter there was always a lot of manoeuvring to get square and be able to get it in. But with this, I can literally just go back in for another grab, but I have to get some beans first. So every, every bucket that goes in, a lot of beans goes in with it.
advantages as well because I can swing the bucket out to the side I can always keep my wheels out of the grain grain loss to a minimum and keep your grain clean that you're not driving across it and bringing it out and popping up so it is a little masterful yoke so it is that grain so I have the mill full the, the trailer back in so up uh, in a few buckets and all stuff. So. Things I like about this over the teleporter. The teleporter, you, the word is high up. So when it comes to filling the mill, you never fully see. You, you wouldn't know you had the mill filled till it overfilled and you'd spill it. Or this I can see. Swing rotor, boomed out in the trailer. Back in. This job is definitely a good job. But anyways, we'll be broken away at this. We'll probably do a bit of time lapse and we'll be going home with Eric. Right, we're driving with him. We'll have to show Father Phil how to work this loader. He hasn't driven before, so he'll he'll have to keep the thing showing the road while I'm getting the load brought back. But anyways, we keep him mosey in a way. chunk of all the beans and the oats and the barley still rolling away so I think me and bro will head back with the trailer and then father phil will we'll give father phil a crash course in driving this and we'll leave it. So that is so it's a slight change of plans we worked to roll all day but we've come up with a slightly better plan the next three days we'll roll every morning till we try and get this all rolled even if we have it left rolled and some of it's up here and we have a heap of it at home it just means we're finished the mill can be serviced and packed and we don't have to be worrying about trying to go up here because the 15th of January isn't too far away and as soon as that happens it becomes very hard for us to have the time to do any rolling so we're just good to have it done so anyways yeah we'll be on back to the yard and we'll pick this video up tomorrow and we'll get rolling again so here is the next day oh. bro actually has a pair of trousers on put up a lock of inoc inoculant and um We'll be on up the road to Doubt Farm and we'll get a bit of rolling done. No, we're up here in the shed. Big square baler sitting in there nicely. Let's get ourselves unloaded and um, yeah, we'll get rolling. I'll give Bro the camera, he can get some footage from outside the cab and um, just make a bit of a change. But yeah, we're well on. There's, we've used rolled a lot of barley and oats yesterday now, but we'll get another two trailer load roll today and um, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, we're going to unload this, yo. 
We've got a knife, of course. So, we are away now. Rolling in for the second day. So, the mix we're doing at the minute is six shovels of beans to the bucket, roughly. Is what's going in, uh, wave wise, I have no clue. Um, and then it's three buckets of barley to one bucket of oats. That's how we're mixing it. Action as if you've been sent back. The reason we're not putting in a full bucket of beans at a time when we're putting in a shovel fulls every time is a full shovel of beans rolled on its own um, does not go through the mill very well is the best way of putting it. Um, if we put in too much beans in a bucket going into the mill, they start to stick on the rollers and just not, not a great job to roll the beans on their own. Um, they're not a great job either. We tried that before and the beans on their own, very hard in the mill or it sounds like it's very hard in the mill. But when you put them sparsely through like the oats or any other crop, they get a great roll and you've seen them, they, they come out completely flat and it seems to go through the mill fine but you just don't put in too many beans. Beans are the extra protein in our ration and that saves us having to buy soya beans. So field beans, the beans we grow ourselves, saving us having to buy imported soya beans. So happy days, that's why we grow them, we'll be growing them again next year. They haven't kept as well as what we would like, you can kind of see there blue on some of them now it doesn't seem to affect uh, how they keep red they're just gone blue some of them some of them aren't some of them are gone black um, just probably we don't know the, whether we should have put more acid on them or whether it was the acid dried off them and it just but for whatever reason it just didn't seem to keep that well but they're fine like they're not gone soft or anything it's just that blueness on the shell and it gets knocked off and like you rub it off. It's odd, but it seems to be fine. They're not causing us any issues. They're not rotting or anything. So yeah, just could have kept maybe a little bit better. But then that's always the trouble with beans. You harvest them late on in the year. It's very hard to get them at a low enough moisture. Anyways, that beeper as well is very loud. And just for where it is in comparison, it is quite literally just on the back, the other side of the glass where the buzzer is. Not how on the back of the machine, just behind the cap. Just, it is very, very, very loud. Plus, of beans, another bucket of barley, then we get a bucket of oats, and then I'll probably throw a few buckets into the chair. Rolling isn't the most exciting job in the world. It'll be a long shot, but the reason we do all this extra work is that between the growing and all this processing, rather than just going to the mill and buying, finish and ration to feed the cattle. Number one this year, I mean, it's, it's very proud to say that we are basically self-sufficient with the exception of the biscuit meal. We're self-sufficient winter finishers. Not too many in the country can say that. Um, another thing as well, with the cost of meal, we are save, making huge savings by doing all this work ourselves. Huge savings, especially the year that's in it with the way meal has gone. With the barley, just the barley on its own roll at the minute is trading somewhere around the 300 euro a ton, which is madness, absolute madness. And the years we <coughs> used to so grow a lot of grain for sale, we, we used to only be getting 180 or 200 euro a ton roll. Now it's over, it's 100 above that, just the way things have gone. But um, so yeah, there's huge savings to be made this year, having grown our own feed. But next year's going to be the challenge around fertilizer, increased cost, a seed and diesel. So yeah, next year's going to be an interesting year, but this year was definitely a great year to have your own feed. Fantastic year. We will get this bucket of oats put in and we'll put some in, stuff in the trailer and yeah, we'll, we'll I stop talking. But I tell you now, this loader makes some job out of this. So it does this, the swing. It's until you, you get used in the swing. You just don't realize just how, how useful it is. Like the teleporter 
the small teleporter in this shed at the minute doing this job, I wouldn't be getting the same amount in a bucket and I'd have every bit as much, maybe even more maneuvering to try and handle. This kind of work, in this kind of a set, is where this machine is king. Like, even if you had a skid steer, which would be supposed to be the next best thing, you don't have the bucket size or the output to be able, like, ah. Oh. I was always looking forward to using this machine in, in, at, for this job, and it is just so handy. Bro is hard at it there shoveling, but um, yeah, we we'll away the camera and we'll. Um, do a bit of work and we'll pick it up later but yeah uh, this loader is this is probably the best use of this loader so this moving grain around in tight space love them absolutely love and that's the first load of the day filled bros just after getting down off it so we're getting getting a lot into the shed or a lot into the trailer so happy days also you can see it, outside this shed is quite mucky so being able to stay in the shed to keep working uh, so saves us a lot of like muck. If we were going in and out of the shed to try and do this job, we would bring a lot of muck into the shed. But as it is, you can kind of see the ground. Like there's there's no muck there. There's no muck in front of me. It's wet there from the rain, but like there's no muck inside the shed. So that's one of the reasons. You you, you really when we're at this job, we have to stay in the shed. You enjoy that. Bit dusty. Can you drive this? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. 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 I'm a wee bit itchy. Ah, go dust yourself off. Go for a run there across the field. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we keep rooting away here, fill it up and get wait for Father Phil to come back for another trailer load. So I think we still have 10 ton of or enough inoculant there to do another 10 ton so yeah, we keep rooting away at it also i have to get all the oats out of there because we're going to turn the beans into that corner that's the plan just give them a turn and um, make sure everything's okay with them but yeah oh it's handy enough this job so we are back in action now i want to show you this green dial, can you see it? No, you cannot see it. You can see the green dial there. So, just to kind of give you an idea um, on how much weight this will take on swinging to the sides and that, if you keep an eye on that as I go about loading, you, you get a, a feel for how much weight it can take. Now, I have put it to 100%, only the once load at Bales of Silage, the video has yet to come up, won't be up for a while yet, but um, I was testing out with bale of silage what the extension was to the side, and it was roughly the bale's about 700 kilos, and a full tilt, full, fully out to the side, and boom, fully out, was at 90%, and any little movement to the, the loader at all, and you were, you could nearly feel the wheels coming off the ground, and that was the limit. You'll see it in the video of when we're doing bales. We, we were at bales to deliver that we'd sold, so we, we went at it with this and uh, the tongs on it, or the soft hands. But um, that's that was the limit. Like you can see there at the minute, fully in, 
with a decent load now, packed load in, in the bucket, I'm at 65%. Just swing it right round now to the side, fully out. I'm at 70%, so it changes 5%. For that. One of the things I'd be quite confident in seeing is, from what I've seen just doing this job today, or yesterday, is definitely this will be able to take a bigger bucket, hold more grain, and still not affect how stable it is on the sides. I, I don't think it goes above 80%, even with the boom fully out. Um, really and truly, it, it's quite well matched for this job now. There's not mad weight in the grain anyways, but yeah, it is, it would, I, I'd be quite happy to say it definitely take a bigger bucket. Booming it out now, booming. So that's fully out, I'm at 80%. That's full to the side, fully out with the load of grain. It's stable, I don't, like, shake the bucket there. I don't feel like I'm in any danger of tipping over at all. So I don't. So definitely this loader, in, in, for this job, is massive. You're saving on time. You're saving on the wear and the tires. And you're saving these because there's less maneuvering to be done. Less maneuvering, so it's it's a win-win all around, so they say. Uh, we'll skip till we finish up and we'll show you a bit just on the ground uh, the, how it looks like when it's done and maybe put it back in the yard when we shove it back in, shove back the load into the shed. We'll get this trailer filled up anyways. That is Another load rolled, ready for home. Hatter, yeah, if Hatterfield said we'll come up and we'll do another bit tomorrow, just get as much as we can done. We'll be on back to the yard. So, back in the yard now. So the plan is just push up the load, the last load of grain that come in, so that there's enough space to get that load tipped. The only other annoying thing about this shed is, um, yeah, you can only go so high up, up. This is our barley, oats, and beans. That's what it looks like. You can see all the beans in it, all the flap, flap bits. You can see them all. That's what they all look like. There's lots of it, lots of them in it. So there is. It's like a bit like flake maze. But we'll give that a shove up. And that, that's really it. There's not much else to say about this video. Um, so we're going. Ooh, that's him blowing away a few starlings. Um, so we're going to leave it at that for today's video. Um, it's not making it easy for me to do this. We're going to be rolling more tomorrow. But I've kind of covered everything I need to cover in this video. You guys see the pouse and how useful it is in that setting. Which is absolutely fantastic for this job grain amazing in the shed but um that's what we're feeding to the cattle we should have enough there to keep us going hopefully into mid-february and get us by the first push of the slurry so we'd have a bit of time to do more but we'll have more come back but anyways look i'm gonna leave it at that. i hope you enjoyed today's video if you want to find learn out more about the pow slaughter there'll be a phone number for liam in the description down below the man that left it to us you can give him a call if you're interested in it and um we're going to leave it at that for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. That is it from us. Good luck.